Hello everyone. Good afternoon. I am back again to continue this conversation about cortisol. So I was here the other day and I was telling you all about how the stress hormone cortisol is really pretty responsible for a lot of the stubborn belly fat that women who are menopausal and perimenopausal struggle with. And what I was talking about the other day, if you missed it, you want to check it out. I was talking about why cortisol is such an issue and, and how it actually causes this problem, but also some of the things to start doing, some habits to start doing to help you to lower your cortisol levels. And I really wanted to build on that today because there's more to it than just managing stress. You know, whenever we think about stress, the first thing we think about is, you know, trying to chill out a bit more, trying to do a bit less. It's not always possible. You know, we're often very limited on how much we can do about the stresses in our lives. There are some things that we do have more control over. You know, I was talking the other day about how um, not all stress is psychological. Uh, a lot of it can be physical. So that could be over-exercising, under-eating, too much fasting. Um, it can be being in pain, which you know, might not be able to do too much about that. But there are bits of it that we have within our control. So there is some stuff that we can do on the stress management side of things. But often with our clients, we want to make sure that we're really supporting the stress response because it's one thing you know trying to reduce the stress and that's really important and that's kind of the long-term factor that needs to be considered but in the short term there are things that you can do to really support your body through the stress because when you are stressed whether that's from physical stress or emotional psychological whatever it's very depleting on your body. It will deplete a lot of your nutrients. It can really impact your muscle. It can you know, help, well, it can limit the muscle building um, and actually you know, really strip your muscle of the glucose stores that it needs to, to function at its best. So your body can really suffer and that in the long term can lead to things like burnout, but in the short term and the long term, it can lead to hormone disruption, which in itself makes it more difficult to lose the weight and can cause stubborn belly fat. So I thought I'd run through a few things with you today that you could start thinking about to really support your body through stress. As I say, we want to take a well-rounded approach and try to limit um, the stress where you can and address the stress at its core where you can when that's possible that's always the priority um, but if you can't do that these are the things that we want to make sure we're doing to support your body and by the way if you are menopausal or perimenopausal which pretty much is the age range of late 30s 40s 50s um, maybe even 60s for some women then you have a reduced resilience to stress and I was talking about this in my video the other day and I'll link that so that you can check that out um, so if you're in that age range then we definitely want to be doing some sort of what's called adrenal support so a sp supporting your stress glands to just reduce that burden on your adrenal glands so one of the first things that we want to think about is really providing your body with the nutrients that you burn through very quickly when you are under stress. And the first thing that we always think about is magnesium. Magnesium is something that most of us are deficient in anyway. It's very difficult to get enough into the diet, even if you have the best possible diet, because magnesium is so depleted from the soil. So it's depleted from our food. And it's also something that most of us are burning through quite quickly anyway, because you know we lose a lot when we drink alcohol, when we drink caffeine, we really flush through the magnesium. 
Um, if you exercise regularly, if you sweat a lot, then you're losing magnesium or have a higher requirement for magnesium. If you're not sleeping very well, that's a form of stress. So you might need more magnesium then and magnesium can certainly help with stress and um, sorry, with uh, poor sleep. Um, and magnesium is a very calming nutrient. So it's pretty helpful if you are under stress, partly to just help to, to chill you out and to help you to sleep a bit better. It helps with muscle recovery and hormone balance and all sorts of things. So it's a really good all rounder. Um, so that's something that you know, there's many forms you can take it in. One really good form is in the form of Epsom salts. So you would add Epsom salts to your bath and then bathe a few times a week. And bathing for 20 minutes really helps to improve your absorption of magnesium because we absorb it really well via our skin. And if it's hot out and you don't want to have a bath, you could just have a foot bath. Um, it doesn't have to be warm, it could be cold. It will help with dissolving the magnesium crystals if it is warm. Um, so it could start off warm and cool down if you wanted. So magnesium is real, a real staple and most people you know, should be okay with taking magnesium. It's one that's a pretty safe one to take. Things like B vitamins, we have a really high demand for when we're under stress and vitamin C as well. So B vitamins and vitamin C are very supportive of your adrenal glands. So taking those is a good idea for most people. Again, they're things that we all have quite a high demand for generally. If you're taking B vitamins, you wanna be very selective about the ones you take. You really wanna avoid cheap B vitamins that are synthetic we want to make sure they're in their activated form and one of the easiest ways to check for this is if you're buying a supplement just have a look at the ingredients list if it says folic acid instead of folate it's probably synthetic and you want to choose one that says it's folate methyl folate or something like that um so that's your b vitamins other things to think about are what we call adaptogenic herbs. And these are things like ashwagandha and rhodiola, and there are various other ones, but these are um, stress modulating um, herbs. So they don't just increase cortisol and they don't just decrease cortisol, they modulate, which means that if your cortisol is low, it can help to bring it up. If your cortisol is high, it can help to bring it down. So they're fantastic things that can really help with regulating the cortisol level. And that in turn can really help with your energy. It can help with your sleep. It can help cravings. It can help with your hormones, all sorts of things. You do need to be a little bit cautious when you're taking herbs. If you're taking any other medications, you just need to check that there's no interactions with your medication with any herbs that you're taking. Um, something else to think about is salt and electrolytes. So the electro electrolytes include the sodium, which is salt, magnesium, potassium, and chloride. And these are things that we lose when we sweat. So we inevitably lose some when we exercise, but we have a higher demand for these um, electrolytes, particularly the sodium and the magnesium when we are under stress. So it can be helpful to add some electrolytes into your drinks. You can just buy electrolytes online. Also just adding a pinch of salt and a squeeze of lime to your water can do the job. We're not talking loads of salt, we're just talking a pinch here and there. Particularly if you've really cleaned up your diet and you're eating very clean, you're not having loads of carbohydrates or processed foods, much in the way of sugar, because you actually eliminate a little bit more salt than average when you are eating kind of fewer carbs than average. So you have a slightly higher demand for salt if you're, if you're eating a slightly cleaner diet. So always opt for really natural salts. So things like sea salt or rock salt, they're the things that are gonna be most supportive, particularly pink rock salt. That's got a whole range of different minerals in there and it's gonna be much more balanced and hydrating for you. And then the last thing to think about is actually fueling your body properly. So many of the women that we work with, they aren't eating enough and they're not eating enough carbohydrates and they're not eating enough protein. 
Um, so what we want to make sure is that, you know, particularly if you're very active, but also if your stress levels are high, we really don't want to be going into a massive calorie deficit because, as I said earlier, under eating causes elevations in cortisol. It's a, it's a bit of a long story, but basically when there's a famine or a lack of food available, the way that your body preserves your fat stores to help you last longer is by releasing cortisol because what cortisol does is it actually strips and liberates glucose from your muscle so that you've got energy um, rather than using your fat stores. So cortisol, when it's elevated, you're really preserving your fat stores rather than burning it and under eating just mimics that whole famine response. So we wanna make sure that you're eating enough, you're fueling your body properly. That's gonna help support you through the stress response and make your body more resilient to stress as well. Um, and along with that, we wanna make sure that we're not taking those carbohydrates too low because you know keto and low carb is very trendy. And we definitely don't wanna be going crazy on the carbohydrates. And you know, I talk a lot about uh, not going crazy with the carbohydrates with my clients, but equally, we really don't want to take them too low. Generally, the ketogenic diet, um, your carbs you take them down to less than 5% or usually less than 50 grams of carbs per day. And for many women, not for all, but for many women, it's just too low. It's not enough to support your thyroid function. And again, if your thyroid isn't happy and that's not functioning properly, that in itself can cause an elevation in cortisol as well. So don't take your carbs too low and we want to make sure that you're fueling your body properly. And that is all of my tips that I've got for you today. There's lots of things that you can do to support you your body through its stress response and with our clients we look at what's going on in their body we run tests and we uh, identify what their individual needs are so that we can tailor the approach to what their body actually needs because what we find is that you know all the women that we work with they come to us with the same problem which is they've got stubborn weight, they cannot shift it, or if they can, it doesn't stay off for very long. And so they all have that same problem. But when we run the tests, what we find is that there's, they've all got different causes of these problems. And, you know, I've mentioned things like B vitamins today, and some people we run tests on, and there is just a huge demand for B vitamins, and it's just so blatantly clear. And for others, that's not the issue. They don't need more B vitamins. And actually, there's something entirely different going on. And also, you know, if you've got deficiencies, there's lots of reasons why you'd have deficiencies. It can be a lack in the diet, but it could be that you're not absorbing them properly. Or it could be that your body isn't actually activating them and utilizing them properly. So that's what we start delving into with the tests that we do so that we can address those issues so that you don't have to take supplements forever. You're just taking them to bring you back up to a normal level. And then we address the issues, why you've got those deficiencies or imbalances in the first place so that they are balanced in the long term. So hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, make sure you give this video a like. It helps Facebook to tell people that it was helpful and it shows it to more people. And lastly, if you are feeling like you need help, if you're feeling stuck and you feel like you want a more tailored approach, a more personalized approach, you wanna know what is it that your body needs and how on earth do you need to eat? What do you need to do to shift this weight once and for all? Then we are here for you. And the best way that we can help you is to talk with you on the phone to find out what it is that's going on what it is you need to keep you moving in the right direction and get you unstuck. So if that sounds good, then you can book in for a free weight loss breakthrough call with us. I'll drop the link in the comments below and you can schedule your call at time that works for you so that we can delve in to what it is that's going on for you and what it is we need to do. And it's completely no obligation if 
we don't feel like a good fit for you or if we decide that you're not a good fit for us if you know what we offer isn't right for you that's cool there's no obligation at all so make sure you book your call if you are feeling ready to take a more targeted individualized approach and address the stubborn weight once and for all thanks so much for watching and i'll be back soon with another topic take care everyone bye